Hey guys, I <clears throat> can't really see if anybody's on with this this phone. Um, I want to see a couple people. Hi, Nema uh, and Alicia. I was uh, thinking this morning that that there was no snow on the ground. I got up at around 6:45, and all of a sudden, uh, I thought, "Man, I I've made a mistake. The sun is shining." Uh, but I was dreaming. But uh, anyway, I got up and looked out the window and saw that there was a lot of ice and snow on the ground. And after seeing the uh, collision last uh, week or the beginning of the week uh, that took place in Fort Worth, I thought it, it, it's uh, too much of a risk to have people to come to church. And uh, but we can celebrate uh, love today here on online it's uh, Valentine's Day and I've been I've been talking about love and I wanted to talk about something today something that God put on my heart um, see hi oh hi somebody said hi to, to me hi Nema and and God bless you sister Hammett it's good to see you hey Hazel it's good to see you Hazel Lawson been a long time since We've been able to see each other. We've been praying for you and your family. Um, hi, Edna Hawkins. How are you doing? Anyway, I've, I've I was thinking about something this this past couple of days, and I've been preaching about love this this week. And love is a it's an important thing for us as Christians. You know, the Bible tells us that we're not to get wrapped up in the things of this world, especially. Uh, the trends, the culture, you know, I know we're all in this world and uh, we we do have culture, but it, the negative things, the things that have been going on lately, uh, well, for the past couple of years, it seems as though there's been a great divide that has been taking place and it's sort of come to a head. And... Uh, one of the places that you see it a lot is right here on Facebook. Uh, people, you know, divided and and ho hostile to each other. And sometimes even Christians are being hostile. And sometimes we uh, we let the, our emotions get the best of us and, and we forget what the Bible teaches us uh, as far as how we're to carry ourselves in this world. You know, this this past Sunday, I, I talked about the greatest commandment and uh, the love of God and how we're supposed to love God. And um, Jesus followed that with saying, you know, likewise, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And sometimes that's difficult to do. It's difficult to, to love people that are toxic, it's difficult to uh, love people that are, you know, treating you uh, with spite. And we, we f sometimes find ourselves, you know, allowing uh, what, what someone else says and does to move us uh, more than the Word of God moves us. You know, the Bible says to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so that doesn't mean that you're a doormat. Uh, by any means, but you can look at every person. Uh, you think about the people that that irritate you the most. It may be a political leader. Some of you may uh, despise uh, your political leaders, uh, the, the ones that are present, even the ones that are past. Some of you may look at your spouse uh, with, you know, a little spite as well, or you may have some bitterness over a relationship that you had, uh, maybe at work, your manager, your your coworker. Uh, the the reality of it is, is we're all supposed to live in relationship. We were not created to live alone. We were created to work together. That's why, you know, the Bible says that that we are the body of Christ. There are many parts. But we are one coming under the head of Christ. What, what, what does that mean? Well, we we operate in in the love of Jesus, in the grace of the Lord. We operate 
in um, in His Word, and His Word trumps uh, everything that that comes up. You know, as far as our emotions, of course, sometimes. We fail and we get upset and we say and do the things that we shouldn't do. But the Bible, you know, we've got to be mindful that the Bible teaches us that our our words should be like honey. You know, it, it turns uh, wrath away when you, when you speak uh, with intention, when you speak with love, when you speak as uh, the, the Bible teaches us that people have value. And so that's what I want to talk about. The people that, that we look at, uh, the people that we may be bitter against, uh, the people that we may be mad at or disagree with. Uh, there's a lot of disagreement in our world. There's, there's been a, a struggle to uh, change some things and, and really uh, in, in some ways or a lot of ways, uh, people have been changing and shifting away from the teaching of God's Word. Uh, so how do we react to that? How do we respond to that? Well, the Bible tells us uh, in 1 Peter 2.17, uh, show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God and honor the emperor. You know, this this is an important thing, and I think that that we have gotten away, uh, for the most part as Christians, from mutual respect. You know, we are to respect everyone. It it did not exclude people that do not agree with us. Uh, it did not exclude uh, people that have different values than us. How can we expect someone? that is not a Christian to understand the Word of God. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that they don't understand. They can't understand. And so when we, when we react with hostility, uh, when we react with anger, you know, I know some, some of it, uh, for the most part, is frustration uh, because we see, uh, you know, and we know what the end result of sin is. Uh, you know, sin always leads us to, to death. It, the end result, it always leads us to uh, destruction. You know, sin is fun for a season. Uh, you know, living, you know, any way you want to is, is fun for a season, but eventually, you know, it begins to, to wear on you. And some of you that might be watching know what I'm talking about. You know, you know, you can go out and and uh, party up every you know every night, but eventually you're you're going to get sick and tired of it, and and then you're you're no longer uh, being driven by what you want to do. You're you're sort of trapped in the devil's snare, and that's why some people are trapped by alcoholism, uh, drug use. Some people are even trapped uh, in bitterness and hatred. Uh, we're not supposed to be like that as Christians. We're supposed to to operate uh, in love. We're supposed to uh, be led by faith, and we're supposed to walk in the Spirit on a daily basis. So, how can you know we show respect, mutual respect, to someone that doesn't agree with us? Well, think about this: God values everyone. Think about your the your nemesis. Think about someone that is spitefully used. You think about someone that's just as mean as a junkyard dog. Did you know that God loves them? God doesn't love our sin. He doesn't love our poor behaviors, but he loves us. The Bible says that, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him, that would believe in him, would not perish but have everlasting life. There, there is no exclusion to God's love. And, you know, last week I talked about that. You know, God's love cannot be measured. It cannot be broken. It can, you know, demons, angels, you know, whatever. Uh, we cannot uh, cause the love of God to stop in our lives. And so when, when we... 
uh, are engaged with people that do not have the same faith as us, you know, our our job, according to the scripture, is to let the light of God shine so that that they could see, you know, we, you know, we believe in uh, what the scripture said, that there are people that, that cannot see, there, there are people that cannot hear, their, their spiritual senses are shut off. And, and why is that? Well, that's because they haven't, um, they haven't been introduced to Jesus. And so our job is to introduce them to Jesus. How are we going to introduce someone to Jesus if we don't value them? They're not going to hear what you have to say. And if you look in the, the Gospels, Jesus always showed uh, that he valued the sinner. He valued the crooked uh, person. He valued, uh, you know, women that, that may not have necessarily, you know, been uh, pure. Uh, he valued them. You look at the woman at the well and how how Jesus valued her. She had been in and out of relationships. She had been married uh, a lot. Uh, and she wasn't valued by society. She was definitely not valued by uh, Jewish society at the time. Yeah. She was not only a Samaritan, but she was an adulterer. She she had been divorced several times and but, but, you know, a lot of times we look at the surface value of someone. We look at someone uh, and we say, well, they're successful or, you know, they're, they're over here on the street corner begging for, for money. Uh, you know, we, we tend to look at people on the surface value. But God looks at us in a different light. He looks at us in a totally different way. Yes, he sees uh, sin and he sees uh, corruption. Yes, he sees wickedness in the world, but yet he also sees the fact that that we are his creation. Those that that are stumbling around on the street, uh, those that are you know having to seek shelter because they have no shelter, um, those that that may you know have treated uh, their spouse poorly, uh, you know, and, and I can go on. You you go up to the very top where the, the wealthy are and, and, you know, they don't, they don't really, you know, value uh, a lot of people as far as people that, that may not have what they have or, or the money that they have, they, they sort of live on a different level. And that's the way society is. We, we judge people by the, the surface, but as Christians, Everybody that we meet, everybody that we come into contact with, everybody uh, that that rules over us, you know, as far as uh, politically or, you know, here uh, it said in First Peter, you know, honor the emperor. Well, the emperor, guess what? He wasn't very honorable. Uh, he was he was very cruel, as a matter of fact. And and the leaders of, of their day, you know, how could how can you honor someone? that's hostile towards you. And, and we're not talking about uh, just, you know, sticks and stones. Uh, you know, we're talking about rhetoric. We're talking about uh, people that were uh, being crucified, people that uh, eventually what it, it all led up to was people that were being uh, tortured, that, that were being thrown to the lions, to the gladiators. Uh, and, and here these early Christians were... Uh, you know, how, wondering how how do we you know talk to, to these people? How how do we respond to this this hostility? How do we respond to people that look down upon us simply because we believe? Well, we look at them with value, you know, and that that's the thing of the world. We're not to be of, of the world. Uh, you know, the unborn are not valued. Uh, I personally believe that they have value. You know, every life. Has value. How can how can we say that an animal? You know, we have our dogs inside. They're they're cold outside. They don't they don't like the cold just as much as as we don't. So we have our ninety pound Rottweiler. You know, laying in the carpet in there, and babies are crawling all over her. And uh, we have a, a Doberman Pinscher, and we we value our pets. I know you guys uh, value your pets and. And you, 
probably got them inside as well. How can we value uh, our pets, you know, over the unborn? How can we value uh, our pets over, you know, our brothers and sisters in Christ? You know, we need to to value people. Uh, everyone's life matters. People matter. That's what the Word teaches us. The Bible teaches us that while we were yet sinners, while we were hostile towards God, you know, God loved us anyway. And he didn't, you know, cast judgment. Jesus said, you know, I have not come to condemn the world, but I've come to bring life and life more abundantly. Uh, you know, th there's, there's a lot of wonderful scriptures in the Bible. It says in Matthew 7, 12, uh, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. It doesn't say respond to others in this way. Uh, you know, the, the world says if someone does good to you, you do good to them. If someone's nice to you, you, you be nice to them. Uh, and, and believe me, for Pastor Phil, that's hard. You know, when someone, you know, honks at me from behind or, Someone says something on Facebook that, you know, I don't agree with. Well, of course, the natural man, the, the natural uh, flesh, you know, wants to react in such a manner that that is, you know, the same. You know, you, you slap me in the cheek, I'm going to slap you back. And believe me, it's going to be a lot harder. You know, that's that's sort of the attitude that we have as Christians, but that's not biblical. And so we want to to treat others first. You know, not not in response to someone treating us good. We are to treat everyone as we want to be treated. We want to treat people with respect. How many uh, here like respect? I love you too, Brother Jacques. Uh, uh, love you, Sister Charlotte. Uh, how many people like to be treated with respect? Do you do you like uh, when someone treats you kindly? Of course, we do. When you go to the, the store and, and you know, the cashier, you know, is respectful. Um, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to, you know, some place and the person was having a bad day and the service was bad and, you know, they just were grumpy. And a lot of times we respond with, you know, no tip or, or grumpiness. Well, you know, that's a perfect time, a perfect opportunity to show God's love. You know, quit looking at someone's pain as, as a personal attack towards you. Quit looking at someone's bitterness as a personal attack towards you. Start looking at their value. And you know what? When you value people and you show them that you value them, then guess what? They're going to value you. That's what the Bible says. You say, well, where does it say that? Well, what, it, what you sow, you're going to reap. Whatever you give, you're going to receive. That's the law of God. And so when you begin to show value to people, uh, when you begin to show respect to people, well, they don't believe what I believe. They, you know, they stand against the word of God. Well, they're not, they may not be Christian. And, you know, you can, you can label yourself a Christian, but if, if you're, if you're, you know, thinking is, is reversed from God's word, well, you're not a Christian. You can, you can call yourself a Christian, but the Bible says we're, we're to know God's word. And so that doesn't mean that, that I'm going to be disrespectful to someone just because they have a different opinion than, than I do. I'm going to show compassion, love. I'm going to look at them uh, with value. I have friends that, oh, hi, Kate, Mike, God bless you. I'm going to look at people uh, as Christ. You know, you have to choose to do that. You know, how are we going to win anyone to God? Uh, with hostility. You know, the Bible tells us that we're to live at peace uh, with everyone, if possible. Well, sometimes, you know, you, you're you not going to be able to do that. There, there are people that are so toxic and hostile that, you know, sometimes you got to take a break. You know, you look at, uh, you go and you, you study the scripture. You, you see there was a, a di difference of opinion with uh, Paul and Silas and uh, you know, for a time, they, they sort of went their separate ways, but they didn't hate each other. They didn't, uh, you know, go away thinking, you know, hey, I, 
that guy's wrong. You know, they, they went and they did their ministry, how they felt that the Holy Spirit was leading them. Uh, and later on, you know, that they, that you see that there's, there's a mutual respect, uh, among them or between them. And, uh, you know, an admittance that, you know, that, that young man was, uh, wasn't but so bad after all, you know. So, uh, you know, get in the scripture and learn. You know, it's not it's not wrong to to take a break, but when you take a break from loving someone, when you take a break from, you know, looking at them with value, there's a there's a problem when you look at people as though they they have no value. You know, and I want to say it like 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 the Bible sort of teaches it. You know, the Bible says if you if you hate someone, if you slander someone, uh, you're they're the same as a murderer. If you if you don't value people, uh, what difference is it is, uh, is it that, you know, when somebody doesn't value someone that's unborn, I value the unborn, uh, because they're, they're, they're people, they're God's creation. Uh, and there are people that disagree with that. Unfortunately, I, I would personally give my life if, if that were to cease forever, but it's it's the reality, and there are people that believe, you know, that that it's healthcare. That you know, in in some cases, uh, they they feel that it's healthcare for women. I, you know, I disagree. But um, you know, but I'm not going to turn around and and do the same thing they're doing by devaluing them because they're God's creation too, and we need to pray for them. We need to show God's love to them. How, how are they going to see God's love if they're not seeing it in us? How are they going to know God's love if we're not being the, the ambassador of God's love? That light isn't just something, you know, that comes from a flashlight. It's the love of God that shines in a dark world, in a cruel, dark world where, where there's absence of love and where people devalue, uh, everyone, uh, they look at them, you know. Well, they're they're white or or they're black. You know, what kind of foolishness is that? That's 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 crazy. You know, people have value. It doesn't matter what color they are, or what what land they come from. Uh, you know, whether whether they come from from Europe. You know, some of my ancestors come from Europe. Um, you know, I, I'm sort of a mix, and and really. We're all sort of a mix. Uh, we all come from many places, and and ultimately we come from one father and one mother. As Christians, we 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 come from one God. You know, we we've all drank of the same cup of the, uh, that, that the Spirit has given us. We've all come under the same salvation that that God has afforded us. Whether you're Baptist or Assembly of God or you know, Catholic or Episcopalian, you know, if, if you believe in the Lord, you, uh, you know, you, the Bible says you're saved. If you confess him with your mouth, you're saved. Uh, and it's gotten out of hand. We've, we've gotten to the place where we, we don't respect one another. We don't respect, uh, you know, we look at other people's opinions as if they're, you know, um, they have no value. Uh, you know, I have opinions uh, and I value my, my opinions and all of my opinions uh, believe me, I've searched the scriptures and I've I've gotten a lot of my opinions, uh, or really most of my opinions from from the scripture. Well, some of you will say, "Well, I, I have too," and and you know, isn't it funny how every time you read the Word of God, you see something new? Uh, why is that? Well, it's because it's the living Word. It's alive. It's powerful. It's sharper than a two edged sword. And and uh, hey, good morning, Brenda. Uh, it. it Good day, Kitty. God bless you. Uh, isn't it awesome how you can you can sit in in a service and hear a pastor or a teacher uh, illuminate the scripture, and all of a sudden you got something different than you've ever gotten before? Uh, guess what? I, I do the same thing. Well, that that means that you know you know the scripture is is it's deep. It has has so much meaning and. And sometimes God wants us to see it in, in, a, in a new way and uh, in a way that someone else has seen it through the, you know, the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. You know, I'm not talking about heresy where someone, you know, tries to use the scripture to, uh, you know, say, hey, this, you know, this value of the world 
it's okay, and then they take and twist the scripture. I'm talking about a genuine, uh, you know, God-given uh, word that comes from his word. And, you know, I'm just, uh, my point is, is, you know, we all see things differently. Um, we we look at the scripture and the Holy Spirit has something for us. Why? Because we're a different individual. We we have different struggles. I have struggles that you don't have. Uh, you know, you may have struggles that I don't have. You may, you may, have been raised in a, a different atmosphere. You may have been, have been raised in a, an abusive home. Uh, and, and, you know, God's, you know, causing you to grow up uh, and be healed and, and mature in different ways than, than me. I was raised in a loving home. And my mom and dad, I, you know, they're wonderful parents. And, and, you know, I never, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, but man, we had a lot of love. Uh, you know, so... I have I had, I was raised differently. I I never heard a byword in my home. I never even knew that racism existed until I got you know into high school, and someone told me about it, and I was like, you know, I that's not even. I, I actually argued with them because I I just couldn't believe it uh, that that racism was a thing. Uh, so, you know, I was raised completely different. You know, we looked at, I was raised to look at people with value, and I thank God for that. Well, some of you may not have. And so, you know, when you're reading the Scripture, the Holy Spirit is leading you to truth, you may you may see something different. And so, uh, yeah, there, there are Baptists out there, there are, there are, you know, Catholics out there, there are, you know, you know, quit quit talking about each other as if they're worthless and they don't have any value. Uh, quit talking about people, you know, especially here on Facebook. You know, Facebook, you know, it's relatively new. It's not, it's not been around that long, and so we're seeing a, a lot of different things happening, good things, bad things, uh, and in between things. Uh, but don't get on, you know, social media platforms and you know, under the name of Christ and, and devalue people, uh, the quickest way that you're going to lose someone uh, is to devalue them, devalue their their belief or their opinion. You know, Paul said, I become all things to all people. I'm, you know, he wasn't saying, you know, he becomes a, you know, a drunk so he can win the drunk. He, he was saying he, he shows uh, respect to people, and uh, you know, just like he went up to Mars Hill, and and they had all of these gods. Well, there was there was a, a god that was erected, uh, and it had no name. You know, they they just ran out of names, and so they said, "This is the unknown god." Well, Paul looked at that, and he realized that 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 was a belief system that they had, and he got up and he said, "Hey, guess what? I know who this god is." His name is Jesus, and, you know, he began to win people to the Lord. So, you know, on this Valentine's Day, um, you know, going forward, you know, think about how you have loved people. Think about how you have valued people, especially, you know, it's easy to love someone. It's easy to value someone. It's easy to respect someone that's in your family, someone that, that you're, you know, ride or die, you know, your best bud, uh, your best gal pal. It's easy to respect people that, that you know, you have things in common with. Um, but what about the people that you don't agree with? What about the people that, uh, you know, may have hurt you? What about the people that may have abused you? You know, uh, you know it doesn't mean you have to to be in a toxic situation, uh, but you value them. And uh, yeah, you're right, but it's a natural affection is easy. Um, and Charlotte, love, forgive. And uh, I love this so I can see what's going on in the minds of people. This is something that I don't get to do often, uh, see what's going on. And, and isn't it isn't it wonderful to, to see this interaction? Uh, you know, you love people, you know, love people, look at people as God does. It's what the Bible says. Uh, you need to love people as God has loved you. You need to forgive people as God has forgiven you. You need to show uh, grace and, and value to people 
uh, as God has done it to you. You know, if it wasn't for God's love, you know, we'd all be lost. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have the word. We wouldn't have salvation. We'd have no knowledge. We'd, we'd all be lost in, and, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't know the truth. Um, so remember that, you know, you're, you're, you're going out in the world, you're going to your workplace, you're driving down the street, uh, and you're surrounded by people that don't know God. They don't, they don't know what love is. They, they know, uh, you know, only the, the strong survive. They, they know, you know, uh, you know, to, you know, it's a dog eat dog world. Uh, they know that to climb the ladder, you've got to stab a few people in the back. They, they know that, you know, lying is a way to get out of things. Well, they don't know what the word of God says. I mean, for crying out loud, have you, have you seen what people, you know, that they don't know God or they write on the, on social media platforms and they try to quote scripture, (laughs) scripture, they, you know, they, they mix it all up with the stuff that they've heard on the street or heard from somebody that was bitter and it's absolutely wrong. It's a- absolutely taken out of context. It's it's actu- actually, you know, something that was somebody's opinion. It's not even in the Word of God at all. So, you know, you can't expect someone uh, that, that has no knowledge of God, no knowledge of His Word, to to live by the same standards as you. And so how do we get them to do that? Well, you, you show them, God. You, you uh, love your enemy. You pray for them. You, you know, when, when someone that's done you wrong needs help, you know, the Bible says when you know to do good and you don't do it, it's a sin. Uh, when someone needs help uh, and you know that they've done wrong, uh, it's not time for revenge. The Bible says vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Uh, we're to show them kindness. We're to show them uh, love. We're to show them, you know, the love of God. Uh, not to exact revenge. Besides, it's, it's, it's so much sweeter to gain a friend than to get even. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had the opportunity. Hi, Darlene, how are you doing? Uh, I don't know if you've ever had the opportunity to do something good for someone that has treated you bad, talked behind your back. You know, it's a natural response to say, hey, you know, I'm going to get even. But when you begin to uh, talk good about them, uh, love on them, you know, they're going to be so confused. (laughs) And, you know, it it opens a door to say, hey, I'm I'm a Christian. I don't behave that way. And, you know, I value you when you when you let people know, not just in word, but by your actions that you value them. Man, you're going to open a door that you never thought you could uh, open. Uh, so that's that's my message today on uh, this Thanksgiving Day. You know, last last week I said, and you know, invite somebody to church that's your enemy. I want to ask you to do that. You know, this next Sunday, invite someone that uh, you know maybe have they may have hurt your feelings. Uh, a lot of times we we uh, get our feelings hurt or so we get upset about something, and we the person the other person will never know <laughs> they will never know, and they're sitting over there wondering what they did because a lot of times if if you you know did it actually do what the Bible said and go to, go to someone and, and talk to them about it, you'll find out that ninety nine percent of the time they didn't even mean to do it and that they they had no malice. Uh, uh, when they did it, uh, when they said something, oh, hi, Nez, God bless you. Thank you for being on here. We love you guys too. Uh, you know, they don't, they don't even know that they, they did something to offend you. And I, I've, I've done that before. Happy Valentine's Day, Dar- Darlene. We're praying for you guys. Uh, when I, when someone's come to me and said, "Hey, this this is something that you know you said," and and I just wanted to clarify, you know, a lot of times we may be having a bad day, we may be devaluing ourselves, and somebody says something, or they, you know, they 
the sun gets in their eyes and they scowl a little bit and you, you go away upset and uh, you know you don't, you're not feeling valuable yourself and so you, you go away and you never tell them what happened and um, you know they don't know what's going on and and they don't know why you unfriended them on Facebook or why you don't talk to them anymore why you guys don't go out and do anything anymore well, you know, it's because you're not valuing them and your friendship, you know, go to them and, and say, hey, you know, I value you. Hi, Linda. I value you and our friendship and, you know, uh, and, I, and I love you and, and I care about you. I, I value your strengths, your, your talents, you know, let people know how much you value them and, uh, uh, you know, restore those relationships. But Next week, invite somebody that, that may have hurt your feelings. Invite your neighbor. Uh, you know, invite someone that that you would have never thought that you would invite. Uh, give them a call. Shock them a little bit. Uh, they may think, you know, that that you're you're gone and that they'll never talk to you again. Call them up. Tell them how much you value them. Uh, you know, that's what love is about. It's it's not. Uh, romance, uh, of course, that I love romance with my wife, but, you know, there's been times when there wasn't romance and guess what? I still loved her. I still valued her. And, you know, we're, we've been together. Somebody said that they, you know, they wanted our input the other day. It was Brenda Russell and uh, Aaron and Brenda. Uh, so we, we got to go and, and eat with them and some other couples. And they said, well, you guys have been married for over Everybody in this room has been married for over 20 years. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I, I never would have thought uh, I would be married. When we first got married, I thought people that had been, been married for 24, 25 years were old. And Lord, here I am. <laughs> well, you don't get you don't get uh, there uh, by devaluing your spouse or uh, you don't you don't stay at a job and and you know, succeed by devaluing, you know, what you do, you know, or, or your boss, you know, value people. That's, that's the bottom line because God values them. Uh, he values them whether they're right or wrong. He values them whether they're in sin or not. He values them whether, you know, uh, they follow his word or not. Uh, that's why he died for us. So, God bless you, and you have a, a, a good Valentine's Day. Stay safe. I don't know if you saw what happened on the road at the beginning of the week. Uh, it's just so heartbreaking to see all of that, uh, you know, hurt and tragedy. Be praying for, you know, continue to pray for those people. Uh, but, you know, try to stay off the highways and don't, don't be... Uh, uh, trying to get up there and see how good you can drive in the ice and snow. Uh, I used to do that when I was young until I, uh, you know, began to spin out on the highway and uh, almost killed killed myself. Um, so, uh, Pastor, it, oh, yes, it does get sweeter the longer we're together. <laughs> yeah, we're not old. Thank you, Darlene. I, I, I agree, you know, I... I, but when I was when I was uh, 25, I thought people that were 50 were ancient of days. <laughs> and now, you know, I, I'm I'm with you guys. That 50 is the new 40, you know. Um, but actually, it's not. But anyway, uh, you guys have a great great Valentine's Day, and uh, know that Sherry and I love you. We value you. Uh, you mean so much to us. Uh, you got you've got so much to give, and uh, we we're looking forward to greater days in at our church, and we're looking forward to greater days in other people's churches as well, and uh, you know just to stay safe and stay warm. We're not used to this Texas cold, and all of you guys up north don't make fun of us. We're not used to it. Come down here in the dead middle of summer. And, and we'll show you the same grace and mercy as well. All right. God bless you. Uh, good to see you guys that are, that are coming on, Angie and Sophia. God bless you. And uh, if you have any prayer requests, just put them in the comments. 
We pray daily. Our church prays daily. Uh, and we will pray for you. Uh, we've got an awesome prayer team. We have several prayer teams. That's I love that. And don't forget to sign up for our uh, uh, small groups. We, you know, our connection groups. Man, we've been having such a good time uh, in those. And I've been hearing such wonderful reports of, of, of people being discipled. And, you know, that that's the way you do it. You get out in the community and you, you just love on people. Uh, God bless you. And, oh, thank you, Sophia. God bless you. Uh, put your... Put your prayer request uh, on the comment section and we'll be praying for you. Have a sweet Valentine's Day and uh, remember, love on each other and don't forget to love God. God bless you.